Okay, so um, I'm going to demonstrate now how I would play the first five five finger patterns that are listed on page two of your five finger packet. So things to keep in mind while you're playing your five finger patterns. You always want to have both hands, uh, play with both of your hands even though it's only showing one line of music. And um, you want to play with your fingertips. If you can see my hands are kind of rounded, they're not like claws, but they're not playing like this. You want to kind of play on this padded part with this joint of our fingers. Um, you always want to be playing in the key of the exercise number. So you'll see that exercise number one has C, a capital C. So that's going to mean C major. Um, so that means we're going to play our five finger pattern in C major. And we know that C major has no sharps or flats. So it's going to be all on the white keys. Um, and then when you get to the chords at the end, you're going to say them out loud. Um, as in like C major, C minor, or G7 or something like that. If you guys have questions on the key signatures, of pieces, um, the, the key signatures of these specific exercises, luckily you can go to the last page and it's going to show you exactly where to put your fingers for every single key, major or minor. Um, so please go back there if you have any troubles. So for the first one we have C major. So you see we're always starting at the bottom with both hands. So for my left hand I'm going to start with my five finger my right hand, I'm going to start with my one finger, and we're going to play quarter notes going all the way up. So one, two, three, four, five, and then all the way back down, and then the chord at the end. So I would do it in time, like one, two, ready, go. That was the first one and then if we look for, to exercise number two we have C major again and then it has C um, lowercase so that's saying that it's C minor and so when we do a, um, a five finger pattern in minor we take the third note which for us would be C D E and we're going to move it down a half step in order to make this minor so if we have C D E, we found E, we're going to move it down half step. So when you move it down half step, you're going to the next key, whether it's white or black, for this case it's black, and we're going to put our third finger there. Everything else, if you see, stays exactly the same. So I have my thumb on C, and then D. Now we have E flat instead, F, G. the difference there. So for number three we have C major and C minor and then we're adding our um, seven chord which is just playing the top two notes of our triad like that. You'll see for both major and minor it's actually going to be the same because the only thing we change is this third note. So I'll run through that really quick with C major. minor C minor G7 C minor so if you see now for number four we are moving to completely different keys so we have C major which we just played and then we have F major and G major so whenever you move to a new five finger pattern um, and they give you the name of the key signature, that's always where you're going to start. So for our next one, we have F major. So I was on C, now I'm going to move my bottom finger to F. 
and we get situated in here. Every finger has a spot, okay. But also, you wanna look in the back if you don't know. I already know that F major key signature has a B flat that I'm going to play with the fourth finger in line. So it goes F, G, A, B flat, C, B flat, A, G, F. F major, seven, F. So you see you added still that seven chord at the end and it's still the top two notes that you're playing. So then we can switch to G major, which I'm just gonna move up one spot. All my fingers have a place in row, you see. And we're actually good to go because there's no sh sharp or flats in this five finger part of the pattern right now. So. So for five on the list, the last one I'm going to talk about, um, it's dealing with, or it's introducing those same things that we've done, C major, C minor, and F major, G major. But now we're going to add in F minor, which if you recall, we start with F major, so I remember that we have F, G, A, B flat, C, that's our F major five finger pattern. And then to make it minor, what do we do? We take the third note, one, two, three, and we move it down a half step. So if we go down a half step, it's right there on that black key. So now it's going to be. So you should also notice orally that you can tell the difference between this, which is major sounding, and this, which is sad or minor sounding. So you'll be able to know when you're practicing, did I do that right or did I do that wrong? You should be able to tell because you can use your ear to help you. Um, the last one I'll show you is we have G major. Now we're going to go to G minor, which we count one, two, three. Go to that third finger and move it down a half step to right there. So now we have. So that is a little bit of an intro to five finger patterns and why they're important. I especially find that um, these are really useful when you are playing for voice lessons or if you're accompanying a choir or something, very often they will do exercises that are just within the five fingers of the key. Um, and so it's really good to get a feel of where your fingers are going to go for anything. So I can very easily, just from playing for a while, I can go between every single five finger pattern and know what's going to come next because it, I know how it feels. And that's what these exercises are trying to do for you. So if you see, I can go. I went all the way up the scale with the major triads all the way because I knew where my fingers are supposed to go because I know the feeling. I'm not really thinking, oh, well, the third note is, it's whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, or whatever, you know. I'm just doing it because I, I've learned those five finger patterns and I know exactly what they're going to be in each key. So that's what this practice um, is going to eventually allow you to do.